Asagao Academy Normal Boots Club. Hey guys, hope you guys aren't feeling sour today, cause my name is Lemon Chang, and welcome to Asagao Academy, the visual, the visual novel. Now, and anyone who doesn't know what Asagao Academy is, it's basically the dating sims of Normal Boots. And if anybody didn't know, I am a huge fan of Normal Boots. I extremely love them. My favorite one is probably Pro Jared and Peanut Butter Gamer. Those, they're like really entertaining YouTubers, and I honestly recommend them to anyone to just go, you know, check them out. Why not? But anyways, I suppose while I'm here, I suppose while we're doing this, we should do this right now. Now, play. Chapter 1. There's no title for these. <laughs> There's no titles for these. The train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me further, farther, and farther from home. Across from me sat a boy, face half burned in a newspaper. He was deeply entranced in whatever article he was reading and hadn't spoken a single word to me, even when I asked if I could join him in the last compartment with any available space. He shrugged, nodded, and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It had been almost an hour, in fact, and he hadn't even looked at me once. To avoid a conversation, I took instead to counting the buttons on the pretentiously lush car carmine C cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two, and so forth, over and over. This is very exciting, guys. <laughs> now and again, I turned to look at the window where the trees were blurring by. Sometimes the smeared green would break and reveal the quite blue of the Sea of Japan. I mean, I don't know. I can see a photo right there, and there is definitely no, there is no like sea. I just see a mountain and the sky and the grass. Wow. <laughs> Eventually, this rapid made my stomach churn. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't read. <laughs> Maybe because I'm Asian. And I went back to counting the buttons of, on the seat cushions. One, two, three. The train compartment shredded around us. My eyes wandered to the boy in his jacket. It wasn't the school issued blue that I and the other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was a green, varsity like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn on front. Wow. Jared's really handsome. So you're a first year then. He folded his newspaper neatly, set it, on his, set it in his lap, and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. Did he just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy, lidded eyes. His hair, his hair was immaculately groomed, his teeth straight and blindly bright. There was something about him. The light. The way the light hit him that made him look like he was almost sparkling. Leave it to visual, leave it to visual novels to make everything look good. M me? <laughs> he glanced around the compartment, empty besides us, and laughed. Oh. No, I'm not a first year, I'm a third year. The train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against metal tracks. The sudden shrift threatened to rob me, or whatever was my stom was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep it together. What kind of impression would I leave, pu puking on a student before I even arrived at the academy? The boy frowned. I picked at the hem of my cotton skirt. I like skirts. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Alright, well, anyways. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a moment of mouth fishing to find a response. I, uh, it's, I like doing this voice because I'm a transfer student. <laughs> that blended in like imperfectly. I do this voice because I'm in a tran, because I'm a transfer student. <laughs> he laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. I removed my acceptance letter from my, from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper heavyweight off-white had accumulated ceased from my reading and rereading it, as if the world might have changed since the first, last time I read it. Okay, I probably like messed up that whole paragraph. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I'm not good at this. I can't keep talking on these visual novels, especially for like a Let's Play or something. I don't know, but let's continue. The boy took it, studied it, then handed it back to me. 
I'll see you around. Well then, Hana. I suppose I'll be seeing you around. I bet Palace would make like a perfect like voice for for Jared. Yeah, look, comment if you if you want Palace to be in this. Why not? <laughs> he smiled at me as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hiccuped the response, he was already gone from the compartment. I stared out into the empty hallway of the train. It was then I realized, having gone in from, from my acceptance letter, knew my name, and I never got his. The train settled at the station, and I filled out with the rest, and I filed out with, with the rest of the uniform students. Students. I can read, people. I can read. It was early April, and the lost frost of winter had come and gone. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering in the occasional gust, weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked along the road with a swarm of blue jacket bodies, looking at the little groups breaking off from the crowd. Everything was buzzing, so animately around me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands. Well, I, I don't know. I never sweated when I went to school. Then again, I don't want to go to school at all. <laughs> school is stupid. I'm sorry. Well, you need to learn, kids. Just, just learn, but just know it's not going to be easy, easy ride. It was lever bound and wharf, more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to, to the school, I know it was, for maybe the first time in my life, thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. My school issued black Oxford click click on the pavement. I walked this I walked this walk over and over in my mind. So many nights I lay awake, imagining when it what it would be like to walk it from the train station to Asagao Academy the, this first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk. That somehow everything would be magically different. But as if I looked around, I realized nothing has changed. I hadn't I hadn't changed. By the time I reached the massive gate to the academy, I forgot all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. The school, framed by the gates, twisting black metal was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I saw in the pamphlets. This was it. Asagao Academy. I glanced through the swam, the swarm of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. A girl pressed a button on one side of the gate. The excitement in the air was almost plat 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 I can talk. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. As, this, as the rest of the group shifted into motion, I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied myself into knots. The crowd split in different directions. For a moment, I panicked. A tired-looking man with gray hair called out for the first years. A cluster of freshmen students scattered around him. Hey, hey, look at that girl! I turned a few feet away. A small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. Pink hair? Are you kidding me? How desperate can you get? How hot shame crawled down my neck. That's mean. I wouldn't judge someone for their hair. Like, <laughs> it's weird. I mean... I mean, what's, that's kind of like a stupid reason, actually. Like, why would someone judge someone for their hair? That's, like, like, what gives that a right? <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what I'm saying right now. I attach myself to a group of girls following a few steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas hummed in time to my shoes crunching against gravel. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Leave it to anime to always have, for some reason, have girls have colored hair. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, a large sign in the lawn reading Primrose House. More like... I don't know. <laughs> the building dwarfed me in society and sheer intimidation. How many students did Asago have? As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. This is... this is... I don't know what I call this, but... Let's just keep going. I looked away. Then looked back. She was staring at me. She walked over. Oh, you must be my roommate! Okay, so I don't need the voice actor for, for everything, okay. I eyed her wildly. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were skin to a perpetual bouncy castle. What? M me? 
Yes, this is my <laughs> this is my female voice. Bingo. Of course you are, silly. Let me guess. Room 32 Room 325? I fought back to the paper I received a month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my room arrangements. Uh... Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were gonna be a total main character. I'm sorry. A what? <laughs> when I saw you outside the gate, I outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair. I felt a lump forming in my throat. What was she talking about? She had to be making fun of me. I didn't spend more than five minutes on campus, and I was already being made mocked. I, I can't talk. I'm sorry. Please smack me. My hands began to tremble. Is is there something wrong with my hair? <laughs> Don't be worried about your hair, Hana. Her face slackened from its unused smile to a worried expression. Expression. Blah, 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 blah. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> no, no, it's great. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this doesn't look Japanese at all. I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. All your school books are waiting in your room with your welcome letter, and re and I read the envelope. I hope you're not mad. Mai started walking towards the dorm's front doors. I followed behind like a lost puppy. Did you check in at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good. They'll offer to have a staff member give you the tour of the campus, but I can show you around. We don't get many transfer use We don't get many transfer students in year free, you know. <gasps> oh, is that your only bag? Just that one? I'm glad I brought an extra bag of stuff to decorate our room with. I started already. I hope you don't mind. But I, but I did wait to, but I did wait to string the lights. I thought we could do it together, you know. See, I'm very good at voice acting. <laughs> She spoke quickly, the words blubbering from her mouth, and she left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. She held the front door open for me, and I hurried inside. Pink, my bay color. <laughs> uh, girls filled in down the hallway, howling greetings and exchanging vague niceties that were more than often. How was your break, and look at how tan you got! <laughs> yes, girls sound like that. I know, I know this, I know this, viewers, I know this. It seemed like everyone knew each other. I followed Mai as she led me through the maze of students and up two flights of stairs. Each dorm floor looked the same to me. Last, narrow, white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Thin gold numbers were tackled in, uh, to the front of each, the numbers rising as we climbed. You're not missing anything with the campus tour, I promise. Mr. Saitomo does them every year and he's like totally dull. He just drags you around the entire campus and talks in a weird squeaky voice of his. You mean like this? You mean like this? Okay, Palace can probably do pro Palace can probably do something better, maybe. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I smiled, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thanks. We headed down the hallway on the third floor. My stopped us in front of a n door number 329. I mean, 325! I can read people! Is that because I'm Asian? I'll, I'll help you know that. I'll help you know that. Here we are! A faint smell of pork. Papuri. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Waved it through the room. The walls, like the, like the hallway, were a soft, powdery pink. Mai already defaced them with a task of posters, magazine cutouts, and photographs. Some of the photos were of cats, but most of them were male models and rug musicians. Yes, I totally love... I don't know, I can't read that. Someone comment to me what this is, but I can see a guy that's like almost butt naked with a teddy bear. I like that stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, anyways, a bunk bed, two writing desks, and wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity, all clearly provided by the school, were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny room. The top bunk was already covered in kneaded tucket pillows and throw pillows of clashing patterns and colors. 
The bottom bunk was had a single stuffed looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that I didn't need to touch to know how to know was horribly itchy. I must have grinned because Mai quickly smiled at me. I brought way too many pillows and blankets. I always overpack. I went to Italy over break and mom got really mad at me because I brought five bags, but we were only there for like a week. <laughs> she laughed, pulled several blankets and pillows from her bunk and rearranged them neatly on mine. A sudden twinge of guilt and embarrassment hit me. Perfection. There, now that's much better. <laughs> Thanks, Mai. I plans. I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack its contents. Several changes of clothing, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father, a uh, dilap dilapidated stuff. I don't know what that. I can't say that. <laughs> people need. People need to help me with these. I. I can't. I can't read complicated words. I'm. I'm so young. Stop, please. An old portable radio and a small black box. My opened the curtains and the sunlight poured in. No, the light! Ah, shit. Okay. So, where are you from? I, I slid the now empty suitcase under the bottom bunk. Uh, About two hours north of here. It's a small town called... Ama Lulusu. Lul Lulusu. Ama Lulusu. I don't know Japanese, I'm sorry. You probably haven't heard of it. I see the stuffed rabbit, Mr. Bunny. Oh, that's a cute name. Uh, like... Um, I also, speaking of like plushies, I actually have like a Mega Charizard that I got from Otaku Fawn. It was, it was pretty cool actually. I'll put a picture somewhere, I don't know, on my bed. Besides, a purple and teal fro pillow. Oh, did you go to a different boarding school or... No, I went to a public school down the street from my house. Public school? What was it like, Dare? Were the students mean? Did you have a lot of friends? I always went to private schools. My mom's work. My mom. My parents work a lot, and my dad goes overseas. So I think they, they, st stuck me here for convenience. Oh, hey, what's that? I removed an ordinarily powdered origami cream from the black box and was settling it on my unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> oh, this? My mother made it for me a long time ago. I set it beside a stack of thick textbooks which I assume were provided for me Aww. wow it's so pretty I've never seen paper like that before <gasps> oh yeah the lights let me get them Maya went to her own desk opened the drawer and pulled out a long tangle strings of fairy lights I thought these would look nice here <laughs> here help me string them up she grabbed a container of push pens then pulled her wooden desk chair out and looked to one wall. I did the same with my own. Together we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. How was the train ride over here? Did you meet anyone? Um, no, not really. I was in a Camaro with some guy and... What? Some guy? Huh? Was he cute? Oh yeah, you bet he was cute. I call him... My, that's my senpai anime meme lord. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't even get his name. Uh. My seemed disappointed for a moment, didn't perk back up. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. You'll probably get someone in, in the end of this novel. I mean, what? You'll have to point him out to me if you see him again. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's kind of weird. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Like, like, what if you, like, met someone? And then, and then you like see them again, and like, oh hey, you're that guy from that one place. And I'm thinking, okay, why, why, why would you remember that? Like, I'm just wondering, like, yeah, it's like a freaking, like, it's like a stranger. Like, why would you want to, why would you want to greet another stranger? That's that's weird. I'm sorry. Once we finished stringing out the lights, Mai climbed down from her chair and brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah. Done. Okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. Then. There's this ramen place down the street from campus that's like out of this world. But the schools only let us leave campus on weekends. My walk to the window. We could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out. But I guess you want to go to the cafe since you just got here. We could. <laughs> <laughs> she was suddenly. That laugh though. I'm sorry. That laugh is too. I don't know. She was suddenly interrupted by her enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh, Mimi Santos totally just tripped outside and fell on her on her face. I saw it. Oh, is that mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. 
Oh, well, anyways, let's go eat. I'm totally starved. Who says totally starved? Can't you just say I'm starving? I don't, uh, uh, she led me out of the room before I even had a chance to respond. This cafeteria is nice. It's better than the one at my, at my school. Uh, high school's stupid. The cafeteria was buzzing with students excited for the new year. The only people as nervous looking as I felt were the table of skittish wide eyed first. Why did they say wide eyed? <laughs> I'm probably just being I'm probably just being a stereotype, I'm sorry. I stepped into a line behind my, taking an empty plastic tray. We shuffled through, asking for helping from the sulky cafeteria workers when we passed something that looked good. The full trays might led me straight to a table in the back where a few students were meeting. Mai sat down and I took another seat from her. Hi Mai, how was your break? It was good. I went to Italy and Spain. Dad fell off a sk sky jet and broke his ankle. Oh, that must have hurt. <laughs> Poor dad. <laughs> Looking after this abomination. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. It's better now though. Oh. Well, that's nice. I expected it to be introduced, but the girl turned back to her group of friends, and my turn back to me. She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me in a practically minute-by-minute -minute account about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met on the beach that didn't go further than a few salty kisses. Wow. What are salty kisses? <laughs> I sat back and let May my talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to breathe. I picked at the Brussels sprouts and studied Maya as she spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice small details about her. Well, she had a high songbird voice. What? She was dynamic. Her her face twisting this way was in D. Was in D. <laughs> How can you twist into a D? Add into ex exaggerated expressions as she spoke. <laughs> she laughed often. <gasps> she intimidated people in wildly unflattering voices, seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion on them. But most noticeably, she talked. A lot. I didn't find this practically annoying as it filled the silence and she hardly ever... Asked questions that required my full attention. Just as Mai was rounding off a shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing, a flash of a familiar green caught my eye. I glanced over. <gasps> hey, that's him! Huh? Who? I leaned across the table to whisper, just in case he could hear me, though. The ambient chatter of the lunchroom. The boy from the train, that's him! What? Jared? Um, yeah, with the weird green jacket and the swoopy hair. He just he just picked up his tray and he was walking past us when something seemed to catch his eye. Hmm, oh, you. I looked at that and suddenly realizing he was talking to me. Hana. Hana, I met you on a train. How are things settling down for you? <laughs> really well, I found my roommate and she's been helping me out. I get it to Mai, who was thunder-shocked, in fact. Looking around, everyone was... People stopped eating to turn and stared at and stared at Jared at me. My shoulders bunched around my neck. That reminds me a lot of Good Morning Call, where there's like the main character, like who is basically like the center of attention, and I don't think he even cared. <laughs> That's basically this guy, but except this guy's more like open-minded. Well, if you ever need any help, I'll be around. Third year, right? Yes, yes, you can kiss a third year, Jared. I nodded. Some of my friends are in, the, in the, that year. Of course, they can't compare to me. But I'll give them the heads up to look out for you. He flashed a dazzling smile and winked. <laughs> it's the least I can do for such a cute girl. Uh, my sexy voice is wrong. I'm sorry. Well, I'll see you. Well, I'll see you around. I watched a torrent of thoughts raging through my head as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket. <laughs> that's... that's Jared! Senpai. <laughs> she tore her eyes away from him and looked at me. He's so cute! He's the most beautiful man in school. Oh, Jared. I can't believe he just looked at me. I looked at Mai. Her cheeks were glowing in an indecent pink. 
Why do they all wear those jackets? Aren't all the guys supposed to wear blue blazers as part of their uniform? No, they're allowed to. They're... You know Jared? The girl turned back around and was looking at me with a sudden interest. I... Did I know him? I only talked to him on the train for a few minutes, so no. So not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, my and this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everyone seemed to be in interest listening in. They seemed so surprised when he talked to me. Maybe a little white lie wouldn't hurt. Alright guys, what should I choose? You decide! <laughs> okay, just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we can say... I guess so. The girl looked at me up and down as if she were expecting a piece of furniture for purchase. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier, did I? I'm Mimi. Nice to meet you. So, how did you meet Jared? Oh, come, come off it, Mimi. Jared's not interested. Maya and Mimi stared at each other for a few seconds, having some kind of silent mental battle. Then Mimi turned away and continued to eat. Hmm. Sorry, it was... It was clear that she was trying to get in with you for her own agenda, so I cut her off. Get in with me? Why? Well, you ask you asked me about those guys in their jackets, right? Those are the normal boots club jackets. Um. They're what? How dare you, Hana? How dare you not know what normal boots is? I'm just kidding. Well, what normal boots club? Wow. Leave it to visual novels to look like a group of boys look really good. It's a club we have at school here. It's like totally exclusive and full of only the coolest students. They get together and play video games. Or something. Wow! The people they admire, the, the, like the, the person that they admire, like the person that admired them, they don't even freaking... Wow. The, the one right here there is John, also known as John Tron. His bird name is Jackus. John is also the president of the drama club here at school. Next to him is PBG. He and John founded the Normal Boots Club together. PBG is one of the best soccer players on our team. Then there's Jared. People call him the completionist because he's obsessed with completing things. He has the biggest itty bitty kitty collection I've ever seen. Next to him is Jared, also known as Pro Jared. He's a model. Then there's Scatbag. But everyone... Scotch bag. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I, I only watch like a few of these guys. I don't watch all of them, but I only like watch a few of them though. Then there's a Scotch bag, but I won't call him Satch. He's like crazy smart. Those guys over there are Paul, Nick, and Josh. They write a column in the school newspaper called Continue. Paul, the one standing up, is the one is the student council president. And the guy on the on the end there is Shane. He knows more about video games than anyone ever. Alright guys, I think that's gonna be it for now. We basically got like the gist of it. Basically, there's this girl, Hana, and then there's like these normal boots normal boots guys. But yeah. I would say that I really enjoyed this. And yeah, hopefully we continue more of this. So hopefully you guys don't say don't stay sour because I am Lemon Chang and I will see you next time. Fuck I messed up the intro outro. Well, anyways, make sure to go check out, make sure to go check out J Chips and Palace's Let's Plays, I guess, and make sure to check out the Chill Zone as well. But anyways, hopefully you guys don't stay sour because I am Lemon Chang and I will see you next time. Yeah.